Regardless of the type of person or the situation, nobody deserves that type of cruelty. She blames her mother's horrific death on Maricopa County Jail officials. Now a daughter's cry for justice will finally be heard in court. It's a trial beginning tomorrow morning, but tonight ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscoving has exclusive access to the evidence. It's exposing a culture of cruelty at our jails leading to dozens of deaths and millions of dollars in lawsuits you're paying for. By the time Deborah Breyer got to the hospital, it was already too late. She was on life support, just lying there. She wasn't responsive. Her daughter Jennifer will never get over the pain of pulling the plug. So you made the call. Is that the hardest decision you've ever had to make? All of it was to be a, to have that responsibility in my hands of being the one to make that decision. Everyone agrees Deborah Braylord did not have to die. Pure neglect and just cruelty. What led to Deborah's death began here at Maricopa County Jail, where she was taken after a minor drug possession arrest. While in custody, records show she was denied medical care and medication for three full days. Something that proved deadly for Deborah. She was a diabetic, and without her insulin, guards and inmates say Deborah suffered every moment in agony, eventually slipping into a diabetic coma. The inmates were complaining about her moans. She was way too sick. She had thrown up on the people right next to her. All that day, she was having seizures. She would shake. Okay. And her body was stiffen up. She defecated on herself several times. And I went to try to wake her up, and she wouldn't get up. They never did anything to help her. Inmate after inmate begged officers to do something. They was telling everyone, there's nothing we can do about it. You just have to deal with it. This is jail. Get over it. One inmate testified, detention officers told her Deborah was, quote, getting what she deserved. Did your mother deserve to die? No. It's been seven years since Deborah's death, and when this trial starts tomorrow, We'll bring you evidence even before the jury gets to hear it, shedding light on what experts call a broken system that has caused needless deaths and millions of taxpayer dollars paid out in lawsuits. You wanted tough jails, how much, I mean, how much tougher can they get when people are dying? Jennifer and her attorney, Michael Manning, hope a jury will hold the sheriff's office accountable for her mother's death and force things to change. Deborah was just a pretrial detainee. She probably would have bailed out in a day or two had she been able to speak. In Deborah's case, attorneys say the drugs in her possession belong to her boyfriend. Her autopsy shows Deborah was drug free. There's no denying that there, she had issues. She wasn't a person deserving of the death that she endured. Jennifer Braylord is now a mother herself. And that's why, no matter what the jury decides, she says nothing can replace what's been taken from her and her daughters. A mom and a grandma, a person that I saw growing and changing into something more beautiful than she already was. Opening statements should begin tomorrow, but tomorrow night, We'll show you never before seen video of Deborah's final hours inside the jail. Disturbing video that raises questions about whether jail guards told the truth about what happened. Deborah Braylord spent three horrific days in jail. When she finally got medical attention, she was barely conscious. Suffering, agony, pain. I'm sure she felt torture. The ABC 15 investigators have obtained this exclusive jailhouse video that reveals what really happened to Deborah and raises doubts about MCSO's version of events. They knew she had life-threatening conditions. They did nothing to help her. January 1st, 2005, 11 p.m. Deborah is arrested on minor drug charges and lands her in Maricopa County Jail. All inmates are supposed to get a full medical screening at 2.22 a.m. These records show Deborah's screening lasts just 59 seconds. The problem is Deborah's a diabetic, but look at this. It's what MCSO claims is her intake form. They say it shows she denied being a diabetic, but check closer and you'll see this form is dated three days after Deborah went through intake and 10 hours after she was rushed to the hospital. And jail staff admit they didn't check computers for Deborah's medical history that would have revealed her condition. 
Over the next three days, Deborah doesn't get any medication or any medical care. Even though a guard alerts medical staff that Deborah is having trouble breathing, no one comes. A nurse visits her dorm to distribute medication to other inmates, but Deborah isn't checked. Without insulin, inmates and guards watch her condition quickly deteriorate. She vomits repeatedly, defecates on herself. She was having seizures. She would shake. Her body was stiffen up. Inmates testify that Deborah is moaning in pain and crying out for help. They were yelling at the staff to do something. At this point, a friend comes to the jail to see Deborah, but he's turned away, told she's too sick for a visit. That night, court records also show three people contact the jail. Deborah's daughter, Jennifer, and two friends each call to make sure they know she's diabetic and needs insulin. Another nurse visits the dorm. Again, Deborah gets no help. Three hours later, Deborah is moaning so loudly, guards order inmates to move her to a room where she's left alone. The guards assume she's detoxing from heroin. Medical records show they're wrong. Medical was one a one-minute wheelchair ride down, down the hallway from K-Dorm where Deborah was. Fast forward, morning comes. Watch as inmates come in and try to help Deborah. She falls face first to the floor. What you're seeing contradicts what jail guards say happened that morning. In sworn testimony, guards claimed Deborah was able to walk. Absolute lie, and they know it. Her attorney, Michael Manning, says this video clearly shows otherwise. Deborah is being carried by inmates back to her bed. Two hours later, her body limp in a wheelchair. You can see her head snap back. She was a rag doll. She was done. Jail staff called paramedics to take her to the hospital. Medical records show Deborah's blood pressure is dangerously low. Her blood sugar, dangerously high. She falls into a diabetic coma. Their recommendation from the start was to just pull the plug. 18 days later, doctors tell her daughter Jennifer there's no more hope. She pulls her mother off of life support. In opening statements today, attorneys for the sheriff's office claim Deborah died because she didn't tell jail staff about her diabetes. But tomorrow night at 10, we'll bring you the story about the jail's former medical director who's come out and said deaths like Deborah's were treated as just a cost of doing business. She's a valley woman who was left to die in our county jail. And now the sheriff's office is on trial for her death in a lawsuit that could cost all of us millions. The ABC 15 investigators have been in court all day long. Dave Biscoving joins us now. And today was the first day of testimony? Well, that's right. Today the jury heard from one of the, de one of the defendants. Okay. She's a jail guard who admits that she knew Deborah Braylord was sick but didn't do anything about it. Now, we've, we're already looking ahead to tomorrow because that's when we expect some of the most important testimony in this trial. The jail's former medical director will take the stand, and we got his, our hands on his pretrial testimony. And if he says anything like what you're about to see, it could be really big trouble for the county. Deborah Braylord was a diabetic. She needed medical attention. And medical records show she died from a lack of basic medical care inside Maricopa County jails. No control over her anything, her bowels, her legs, her head. She was a rag doll. She was done. The person in charge of the jail's medical care when Deborah died will sit in this witness chair tomorrow. Yes, I do. Dr. Todd Wilcox is a nationally recognized expert. In this video deposition, he talks about why Deborah and many other inmates have been left to suffer while in custody. They haven't taken it that seriously. In 2004, Dr. Wilcox was hired to fix CHS, the medical department of the county jails. In 2008, he quit. I tried to help them with their system, I tried very hard for four years, and I realized that things weren't going to change. In his resignation letter, Dr. Wilcox wrote, For the sake of my own medical license and intellectual integrity, this resignation is necessary. It really kind of came to a crisis of conscience. That's why in this trial, Dr. Wilcox will testify against his former employer. In his pretrial testimony, he laid out a long list of problems. <laughs> Like the jail's backlog for medical care, leaving inmates without help for weeks or months. It's so long that you probably won't be seen uh, during your incarceration. Inadequate staffing and lack of training that leads to inadequate care. That's the biggest issue. And in a jail where 75% of detainees have not been convicted and still await trial, Wilcox says there's a culture that treats deaths like Deborah Braylord's and the lawsuits as a business expense. County management just considered that cost of doing business. 
those judgments haven't uh, caused them to uh, change their business practices, so I guess that must be the way they rationalize it. And the cost of doing business has been expensive. Records show there have been at least 150 deaths inside Maricopa County jails since our PIO took office. And add up the lawsuit settlements and fees for all those jail deaths and injuries, and it has cost taxpayers $25 million. Records show the county has repeatedly failed to correct its problems. The ABC 15 investigators found eight different warnings or reports that date back to 1995, detailing unconstitutional conditions inside the jails, including a Department of Justice investigation, a letter from county doctors, and outside audits that called the jails inhumane, cruel, and dangerous. So after paying out millions in wrongful death suits, why haven't things changed? Wilcox says the county didn't want to change, and records show they operate under a code of silence. I mean, CHS is and the county <clears throat> are incredibly vindictive about anybody who criticizes them. And the reason that you don't hear a lot of people um, objecting to what's going on is because of that fear of retribution. He's a top-level insider, and he just told the jury the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office destroyed evidence and tried to cover up what happened to a Valley mom left to die in a county jail. The Sheriff's Office is on trial for the death of Deborah Braylard. Our exclusive coverage continues with ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscobing, and he joins us live now in Florence. And Dave, you were in court all day. It sounds like you heard some very dramatic testimony. Well, Katie, we really did. In fact, when this trial began, we had to go to the judge and fight to keep our cameras in the courtroom because attorneys for the sheriff's office filed a motion to block us. And after what happened today, you can see why. I discovered that there are many mysterious things that happen on the sheriff's network. Dr. Todd Wilcox is the former medical director for Maricopa County Jails. And under oath, he says documents, records, and evidence were either altered or outright destroyed in this case. I remember uh, going to lunch one day, coming back with my sandwich uh, to find somebody uh, controlling my mouse remotely and looking in folders uh, and documents. And that wasn't the only time. Did you ever discover by going on to that sheriff's network that documents uh, had been altered? Yes. That documents had been destroyed? Yes. Dr. Wilcox is testifying against his former employer, instead taking the stand on behalf of Deborah Braylard, a diabetic woman who in 2005 died after she was denied insulin and medical care for three days in county jail. The ABC 15 investigators have obtained one of the documents allegedly altered. It's what MCSO claims is her intake form. They say she denied being a diabetic, but check closer and you'll see the form is dated three days after she went through intake and 10 hours after she was taken to the hospital. So very much a secretive environment. If you complain, you are punished. Records show county jail lawsuits have cost taxpayers more than $25 million. But Wilcox says the county felt that dealing with more deaths and lawsuits was a better business model than providing more care. The county believed that the lawsuits were uh, inevitable. They would have to settle some of them out, but it was cheaper to do that than to build the infrastructure. Wow, this is Major Dave. After hearing all this, how did the sheriff's office and the county react to this testimony? Katie, they objected more than 60 times, and then they filed for a mistrial. The judge hasn't ruled yet, but he's already denied two previous mistrials from them, and it's only the third day of trial. Katie? Now to Sheriff Joe Arpaio on trial and under oath, and this time it's for a wrongful death case of a diabetic woman who was denied medication and left to die in his jails. ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscuit being the only one in court to bring you this exclusive testimony, and Dave, what did the sheriff have to say? Well, Steve, our Pio claims to know very little about Deborah Braylard's death. In fact, after she died, he testified that he didn't follow up or ask any follow-up questions about what happened. Any death uh, to me is important. That's Sheriff Joe Arpaio talking about deaths inside his jails. But when the sheriff was questioned more about Deborah Braylard's death... You know, the thing I was aware that unfortunately, someone died in our jail uh, and was transported uh, to the hospital. You ever ask your staff for any more information about the circumstances of Deborah's death? No, I did not. Records show Braylard's death was never investigated, even though in 2005 she was not given any medication or medical care for three days inside county jail. Without insulin, she slipped into a diabetic coma and died. We don't like anyone dying in our jail system. But the ABC 15 investigators have obtained records that show there have been at least 150 deaths in the sheriff's jail since he took office. It's a tough 
uh, geo environment. But on the other hand, uh, we do the best we can. In hours of testimony, the sheriff was asked about the long history of problems facing his jails. I don't remember. You signed it, didn't you? Yes. That's our pile's response to a question about a three-year Department of Justice investigation that found the jails had unconstitutional conditions and inmates were denied humane health care and not provided their prescribed medicine. Now, in 2008... <clears throat> Braylord's attorneys say 10 years after the DOJ investigation began, the same problems led to Deborah's death. The buck stops with the sheriff. Okay, including health care? Yes. You've been waiting a long time for this day to happen. Yes. A Valley daughter fought for seven years to get justice for her dead mother. Tonight, the taxpayers know the cost of that justice, $3.2 million. The big question, why would the county suddenly decide to settle for so much money in the middle of a trial? And in ABC 15 exclusive, Dave Biscabing reveals the jury was about to hear how key evidence was destroyed to cover up the death. Deborah Braylord suffered a horrific death inside Maricopa County Jail. The diabetic Valley mother was deprived of insulin and denied medical care for three days before slipping into an irreversible coma. Never again. Her daughter Jennifer, who was forced to pull the plug, sued MCSO, Joe Arpaio, and the county. There's just too much injustice there. And so I'm her voice. Braylord's lawyer told us before the trial even started. You're going to hear dramatic evidence in this in this case about the destruction of evidence by MCSO. He was right. In three weeks of testimony, that's exactly what we heard. Documents would go missing or were changed? Yes. Two insiders, Dr. Todd Wilcox, the former jail medical director, and consultant Dr. Jacqueline Moore. I am suspicious. Both testified they saw evidence being changed or destroyed. Going to lunch one day, coming back with my sandwich uh, to find somebody uh, controlling my mouse remotely and looking in folders uh, and documents. The ABC 15 investigators have obtained this ruling from a judge showing that four key pieces of evidence related to Deborah's death were intentionally altered or destroyed. Number one, here's what MCSO claims is Deborah's medical screening form. They say she denied being a diabetic. But look closely. This form is dated three days after Deborah went through intake and 10 hours after she was rushed to the hospital. Her original form? destroyed. Number two, every inmate's medical screening is supposed to be videotaped, but the video of Deborah's screening deleted. Number three, Deborah had phone conversations with family and friends while in custody. All inmate calls at the jail are tape recorded, but the tape of Deborah's calls missing. And number four, two jail guards who testified they failed to get medical help for Deborah wrote reports after she died, but those initial memos also missing. That was information that was in my first memo. Detention officer Sandra Garfias admitted her report no longer exists. Do you have a copy of the initial draft? No, I do not. This is worse than going up against organized crime. And I did that as a lawyer for five years. Please do your job or you won't get your next rate. Three. Chaos at the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors meeting today when protesters take over. They were going to vote on a huge settlement involving a lawsuit surrounding the death of a woman in jail. She had diabetes and she was denied insulin. We have live team coverage on this for you. ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscoving tracking the developments of that lawsuit. But let's go to ABC 15's Mary Ellen Resende. She is live to talk about the way the protesters took over here. Mary Ellen? That's right, Steve, and the day is not over. They plan to return here to the County Board of Supervisors Auditorium for another prayer vigil, the very same prayers that disrupted the supervisors' meeting, causing it to go into complete havoc. The County Board of Supervisors opened their meeting for public comment on a $3.2 million settlement Please for the death of Deborah Brilliard. Members of the Citizens of Arizona took over, demanding the board put their issue to remove Sheriff Gerard Pio from office on their agenda. Instead, Chairman Maxwell Wilson stopped the proceedings. In the chairman's view, 
the board could not continue its legal activity because of the commotion created by the citizens who were there. This is all his fault. We are not going to take any responsibility for this because we have the paper trail. We have the, the emails. We have the phone calls. We have the visits. So you, there's no way I'm going to let any press put this on us. This is on him. Now, after supervisors left the meeting, protesters followed them to their offices, carrying a throne with a Sheriff Joe Arpaio impersonator on top. They had dubbed him King Joe. Now, Sheriff Joe Arpaio had a lot to say about the protesters today. He's calling them a second-rate comedy show. Quote, not only did they make themselves out to be a laughing stock, they disrupted the government process with their politically motivated circus. Now, as far as the Brilliard family issue and that settlement, uh, supervisor officials tell us that uh, it's going to be a while before they can get that back on their agenda. Steve? Yeah, it should be interesting. Lots of anger over this, and we're digging into the whole reason behind that big protest as well. In fact, ABC 15's Dave Biscoving has been following this. It's a three and a quarter million dollar settlement for Deborah Brilliard's death. And uh, Dave, you've been covering the trial. You're the only reporter, in fact, in the Valley to do it. Did anybody really expect this kind of reaction? Well, Steve, when we broke the story about this huge settlement amount and how evidence was destroyed in the case, we expected other news media would jump on it. But we had no idea so many concerned citizens would flood the meeting and speak out about what happened. Second. We have a motion. The meeting was peaceful. I'm 53 and 54. And tame. All those in favor say aye. 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 But then... The Board of Supervisors got ready to vote on the $3.25 million settlement in the Brailer trial. $3.25 million does not nearly cover what her family had to go through. Several people took the floor to comment on the case, and the comments weren't pretty. And a culture of indifference and secrecy were factors in Ms. Brailer's death. Even though members of the audience had plenty to say, county officials did not. Sheriff Arpaio and his attorneys told us they wouldn't talk because of a gag order. Mr. Keogh, I'm Dave Biscayne with the ABC 15. We also approached this man, Brad Keo. He's the deputy director of the county's risk management department. He attended the trial every single day. You can ask as many questions as you would like. I'm not going to violate the judge's order and be held in contempt. But the county and sheriff's office declined to comment on the case even before trial and before the gag order. In fact, the county and Arpaio's attorney, Dan Strzok, filed a motion to keep our cameras out of court from covering the case. As you can see, the motion failed. On ABC15.com this morning. And members of the public cited our stories in today's meeting to call for justice. The MCSO is broken, Sheriff Arpaio is incompetent, and we ask that the Board of Supervisors will put the taxpayers and victims ahead of covering up Sheriff Arpaio's poor record of management. I demand that you have them arrested. Thank you very much. Remember this, that's the protest that delayed a vote to approve the settlement for the jail death of Deborah Braylord. Now, today, another shocking turn of events. This case may be going back to trial. And as ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscoving explains, this could be a very bad deal for taxpayers. It was supposed to be a done deal. 52 and 53. Approve a $3.25 million settlement for the jail death of Deborah Braylord. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Man. But after two yeses and two noes, we have a tie vote. The settlement didn't pass. Now the case could go back to court for the jury to decide. Continuation of the trial is the best way to go. Deborah Braylord was a diabetic. In county jail, she was denied insulin and medical care before slipping into a coma and dying. The ABC 15 investigators were the only ones in court for the first three weeks of the trial. We heard dramatic testimony exposing a shocking level of indifference and in how evidence in the case was altered and destroyed. It's an old track record for the sheriff because when, when you don't like the evidence, you either deal with it or eliminate it. Joel Robbins is an attorney who's battled MCSO in other cases. We caught up with him after today's vote. If they don't like the evidence, get rid of it? I've seen it in a number of cases. Where in a statement, Sheriff Arpaio said he was pleased the case was going back to trial. When will that be? We don't know yet, but a jury verdict could be far more expensive for taxpayers. The people who knew best said pay the money. But now, since a judge has ruled the jury can award compensatory and punitive damages, it could mean a huge verdict, one that could cost taxpayers several times that $3.25 million. Two weeks ago, county supervisors failed to approve a multi-million dollar settlement in the jail death of a diabetic woman. And now that case is going back to trial this month. And ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscabing has obtained exclusive audio that reveals a broken promise by county officials. 
to just know that I have babies of my own that aren't ever going to meet her. In September, a jury heard three weeks of dramatic testimony of how Deborah Brailer died after she was deprived insulin and denied medical care for three days at Estrella Jail. But the trial was abruptly stopped. The party uh, 15 minutes ago had settled this case. Is today April 1st? Yes. Uh, yes, it is. This is a behind-the-scenes conference call. Lawyers for Sheriff Arpaio in Maricopa County telling Judge Carter Olson that the Braylord case had been settled for $3.25 million. It's just the public vote that needs to be done, and so that's pretty pro I mean, I've never heard of it. I'm changing our minds um, between executive and the formal vote, so the, the, the case is over. But a dramatic day in court as jurors were just ordered to report after a long delay in the jail death trial of a diabetic mother denied her insulin. And now those jurors are facing questions about whether they were tainted during that delay. ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscoping is live in the newsroom with our exclusive story. And Dave, there are concerns that this could end up in a mistrial. Without question, Katie, it's been 43 days since the trial of Deborah Braylor was suspended. Now we're learning that several members of the jury may have been exposed to outside information about the case. Even though county supervisors agreed to settle behind closed doors, this chaos caused two board members to change their vote. Now the whole trial is up in the air. We have concerns about his ability to be fair here. The ABC 15 investigators were the only ones in court on Tuesday when attorneys argued that some of the jury should be disqualified. Turns out that long delay may have tainted four jurors. Juror number one. She was curious and she looked on the internet. Juror number two. He told the court that he knew that the settlement was seven figures, that he knew it was three point something million. But well, what if he brings that number into the jury deliberations? Juror number three. Uh, he read a newspaper article that the county opted not to settle. Defense attorneys also say a fourth juror was angry because she had to cancel the rest of a deer hunting trip in Minnesota. She also um, talked about this case with both her boyfriend and with her boss. The jurors were questioned one by one in the judge's chambers. The county's attorneys argued all four should be disqualified. And what could happen then? The court still may make a finding that there's been a waiver of jury trial. That means the judge will hear the rest of the case himself and render a verdict. He's already expressed his frustration with how Maricopa County officials flip-flopped on a settlement. This has already consumed substantial resources of Pinell County in the trying of this case. The county has put us and plaintiffs at an incredible disadvantage. My hope is, is that the prime focus this week is going to be on trying to get this matter resolved. The county has already spent more than $2 million on legal fees in this case alone. So regardless of what happens, that cost is only going to get higher. And as of right now, this trial is expected to resume on November 26th. Yeah, it's getting very expensive, and, and who knows what the settlement will be mm -hmm. eventually. Mayors will write a $3.25 million check to end the wrongful jail death case of Deborah Brailer. County supervisors finally approved the settlement today after two failed attempts and a seven-year legal battle. Investigators Dave Biscoving was at today's vote and Dave why did the supervisors reconsider and change their mind? Well, Steve, even though a $3.25 million settlement sounds like a lot of money, at the end of the day, if you look at what happened to Deborah Braylord in jail and how this case was going, taxpayers may have gotten a pretty good deal. A jury verdict could have been several times higher. It was a special meeting with only one thing on the agenda. This morning, I would like to ask the Board of Supervisors to approve a settlement in the case of Jennifer Railyard versus Maricopa County in the amount of $3.25 million. But after a protest disrupted the first vote, a controversial tie in the second, and all those in favor say aye, only one board member, Mary Rose Wilcox, attended this meeting. The other supervisors, yes, Chairman Wilson speaking, phoning their vote in. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. The only no vote was from Andy Kanasik. One nay, and I got three ayes. Is that right? Yes, sir. Deborah Braylord was a diabetic, and she died in 2005 after jail guards admitted that for three days Deborah was denied insulin and medical care in Estrella Jail before slipping into a coma and dying. Her daughter Jennifer sued the county and Sheriff Arpaio and gave dramatic testimony. Uh, what do you think about when you think about your mother? How she has grandkids. 
and I didn't I didn't get to share the experience of becoming a mom with her. Why do you think settling this case was the right thing to do? What if we had gotten a jury that came in at three or four times the amount of 3.2? Taxpayers also dished out almost two million in legal fees, even before the trial began. We reached out to Sheriff Arpaio and he told us he wanted the case to go all the way to the jury, but we talked with his attorney who said it was a smart move to settle. Yeah, no telling what that jury would have come back with in this trial. Thanks, Dave.